Hello everyone and welcome to this Autovista Group webinar on the remarketing risk of electric vehicles. I'm Phil Curry, editor of the Autovista Group Daily Brief and in today's session we'll bring you a variety of information for about the remarketing of electric vehicles from different markets across Europe. We'll also be looking at how we can learn from Norway where EV uptake is rapidly increasing and pinpoint some recommendations for the market going forwards. Now a couple of things before we begin. Firstly, this session is being recorded and will be made available to everybody afterwards. So if you do miss any information, don't worry, you will have the opportunity to go back over everything that is presented today. Secondly, the chat function on the right hand side of your screen is open and that is open for questions. We will look to answer these directly rather than in this session itself. So please do make use of the function if you need to. Now, the Autism Group Daily Brief is a free newsletter that delivers news analysis, industry insight, and more to your email inbox every day. With the Daily Brief, you can stay up to date with the latest developments in the automotive industry, delivered by Autovista Group's experts and a dedicated Daily Brief team. There's also an increasing amount of multimedia content, such as the Autovista Group Daily Brief YouTube channel and the Autovista Group podcast, which brings deeper dives into the news and topics that are affecting the industry at this time. The podcast is available on Apple, Spotify, Google, and Amazon Music. Now, last year, the market was impacted by COVID-19, and Autovista Group looked deep into the impact of this on residual value formation. Markets had been holding up, and we saw only a marginal correction downwards in most of them. Germany's figures are impacted by the increase of VAT at the start of this year. We'll be covering the COVID-19 impact on used car markets in subsequent webinars this year. So again, please make sure you subscribe to the Autobuster Group Daily Brief for latest updates and notifications on when these will be taking place. Today's webinar is very much focused on electrification as it becomes a mega trend. But why are we talking about the electrification of the market so much? Well, as we can see in this graph, transport provides the majority of Europe's CO2 emissions. And in 2016, these emissions increased, a trend that they followed all the way up to 2019, the last year of non-COVID COVID impacted sales. Now this ties in with a decline in diesel as buyers turn to the more CO2 heavy petrol engines instead. But the problem is that car makers have a mandated average target of CO2 emissions across their fleets, which they need to meet by the end of 2021, with stricter targets for 2025 and 2030. Fines will be imposed should these targets be breached, and for some companies, this could run into billions of euros. Electric drive technology is the most advanced zero emission technology available, and therefore this is why there is such a push to sell new electric vehicles into the market. But what impact will this have on used values, for example? Well, for this and more, I'd now like to hand over to Autobuster Group's Chief Economist, Dr. Christoph Ingelskirchen, who will discuss the state of play with EVs in Europe and the UK. Christoph. Thank you, Phil, for the introductions. And we would like to kick this off with a short poll. Like we always do in our webinars, and for this one, we would like to get your view, your, um, your vote, um, your opinion. So the question we would like you to answer is, for BEVs to gain significant market share, total cost of ownership, and now you have five choices, Number one is must be significantly better than the TCO of an ICE vehicle. Number two is slightly better. Number three is about the same. Um, number four is slightly worse. And you might even say it can be much worse, the TCO of a BEV, than that of an ICE, because there may be other reasons to buy a battery electric vehicle than economic ones. So could you take the next couple of seconds and uh, cast your vote, please. Okay, I think we have enough um, votes now available. And um, this, I mean, I think this this is about. I mean, it's, it's encouraging to to see that it's it's not just um, you know political reasons to buy an ICE. There are economic reasons that need to play an important role here. And the majority of you um, allocate 
yeah, the answers somewhere in between significantly better to about the same as that of an ICE. Um, it could only probably be slightly worse if there are other very powerful reasons to buy an electric vehicle. So moving on, what is the state of play in terms of used car markets in, in Europe? And we are separating this between um, BEVs and PEVs because it's quite different actually. So when we talk about Europe, um, and we will hear the country deep dives a little bit later, but for BEVs, uh, we observe that the absolute residual values, so residual values in euro or in pounds, for example, they are very close to those of an internal combustion engine vehicle. Um, and the percentage of these are up. Some of them are far below those of ICE vehicles. The big driver for this is number one is, is, is high list prices. They are still positioned um, comparatively high and, and that drives you know, relatives of these um, down. They are also subject to a faster life cycle depreciation. Um, range is increasing, prices are actually coming down and technology is advancing. So that also um, puts pressure on RVs um, much more than for example for plug-in hybrids. The build-up of charging infrastructure is actually going to help even the older electric vehicles and, and BEVs to you know, become a bit more attractive because if there's more infrastructure available, um, even older generation cars can be attractive again. Um, the new risk here that we mentioned is incentives, it's in particular the government incentives, which are putting pressure on residual values in, in at least a couple of markets that we talk about today. And, and that's why we have Norway on board here as well, is, um, is there a risk of saturation of export markets that can absorb um, all the volumes of the battery electric vehicles? Now, for plug-in hybrids, the story is, is actually quite different. They are still attractive in many markets from a residual value perspective, um, also percentage residual value, but there is rising pressure that we can observe. The reason why they are still attractive is that they are a bit of a you know, performance play, a bit of a, a show of car um, as well in, in some cases. They have high power, premium appeal, short supply, so quite attractive to be driving it. It's, yeah. um, but there is a beginning pressure in, in remarketing that we can observe and we are particularly critical uh, for those markets where there is a clear overstimulation of new car demand and we're mentioning here Germany because there is a very hefty tax benefit for company car drivers uh, choosing a plug-in hybrid. The questions that we all have to answer when we, we market these cars, um, are they offering benefits as used cars, better benefits than maybe a, a full hybrid or better benefits than maybe a good petrol car? And um, there is also the risk of a theft gate because these cars, they do consume more than they do on paper. If I'd shown this chart um, a couple of years ago, people would have probably said, yeah, it's just another forecast um, for EV market adoption. But when we show it this time, um, people have a very different um, opinion of, of this number. So in Europe, and this is um, um, charts and, and, and data that we have uh, taken from different sources here. Um, so forecasts anticipate an EV market share of 40% by 2030, the majority, 80% is um, likely going to be battery electric vehicles. When you look for the 40% in the chart, it's the second line from the top, the green line, and it's um, rising quite um, quite substantially. Now the 40%, it cannot be much lower. Um, it could be higher. And if we move on to the next page, I can I can explain why it can't be much lower because it's in the end a political decision from Europe, from the EU to push this technology forward. So if you look at the left chart, you see um, passenger vehicle CO2 targets for 2020 and 2021. And in Europe, the average of all new cars, passenger cars registered must consume 3.8 liters per 100 kilometers. There's a direct 100% correlation between CO2 and 
and, and fuel consumption. Now, if you move to the right side of this chart, there are new targets for 2030. The agreed target is 2.4 liters. So that, that cannot happen without you know, serious market share of, of full electric vehicles and, um, and plug-in electric vehicles. Oh, sorry, plug-in hybrid electric vehicles. But there are even talks of making this target more ambitious. Um, so 1.9 liter to 2.4 liter, this is the range where we will see the, um, yeah, the CO2 slash fuel consumption target to be heading for 2030. We also need to briefly cover the future of the ICE because it's quite tied to the future of the electric vehicle. And if we stay on the newcom market for a second, we have seen list prices rising for diesel and petrol for quite some time. So between 2012 and 2020, six to 8,000 euro um, price increases can be observed in petrol, even slightly more than, than diesel. And one driver is the after-treatment requirements that are getting tougher and tougher. Um, every euro um, norm adds another you know, 1,000 to 1,200 euro, depending on the segment. And there is um, quite a bit of anxiety around what Euro 7 will bring. It's, it's tough. Um, there are several targets being discussed. It's not yet agreed. It should be technically feasible, but it means that all cars will have some more or less serious um, hybridization element um, built in. And this would again increase prices for the new car market. Actually not so bad for electric vehicles, if you remember the, the poll that we did. So the more expensive alternatives are getting, um, the, the more economically viable the electric vehicle also becomes. So on the used car market, we know that there is a low willingness of used car buyers to pay for latest Euro compliance. Um, as long as there are no personal benefits associated um, with that compliance. But there is an opportunity as well, because we will see a, I mean, we'll likely see a shortage yeah, of um, internal combustion engines, of diesels, um, but also of petrol cars over the coming years. And if you have your cross-border remarketing in shape, then there should be opportunities to export and to cross-border remarkets these powertrain types into, into other markets where there still might be a lot of demand for ICE engines over the next um, yeah, 10 to 20 years. Moving on, all eyes on EVs, the known unknowns, range infrastructure price. I'm not going to stress this point, but one point I do want to make is that once the subsidies are running out, the list prices have to come down for the battery electric vehicle, um, you know, or the, the prices of the ICE engine needs to go up, but um, the, the, the price, this prices need to come down to um, make these cars more attractive, also from a TCO perspective. For battery marketing, second area on this chart, um, there are new important discussions happening at this point. Um, for example, how can the state of health of the battery be validated? We've also published a white paper on this topic, which you can Google and find on our website. So if you, um, you know, search for battery health certificate and Auto Vista group, you will find our white paper. And there's also attractive second life use cases for the battery that are currently being discussed, which is another virtue. It would help um, their free marketing, um, of course, as well. And people will need to get serious in finding other markets that could absorb electric vehicles um, if, if Norway may you know, not be able to, um, to help out as much in the future. For factory marketing, we do see that overstimulation of demand on new car markets, which is a risk, especially risk for, for thefts that we need to consider. And um, also when, you know, when thefts are so new and used, we have to really think about what are the benefits for driving a FEF over a classic HEF or, or petrol vehicle, so hybrid electric vehicle or petrol vehicle that are not chargeable. And also can't really lose um, out of sight that there may be alternatives coming our way, probably more towards 10 to 20 years than over the next years. Hydrogen, but also e-fuels could develop into competitive technologies and everything will be reversed again, right? ICE 
engines might be back on everyone's radar at that point as well. And with that, I'd like to hand over to Anthony Machin from the UK. Good morning and thank you, Christoph, and welcome to London. Um, so what I'm going to talk about is how used cars are being adopted in the UK, how, how used car buyers really are looking at the market today and how we feel that's progressing into the future. Now, at the moment in the UK, traditional powertrains are still very strong. So the likes of petrol and diesel still have high demand across the UK. Now, the chart here, we're going to use this um, through the presentation from the different speakers that we've got. And the idea here is just to show how, how used cars are being adopted by the different powertrains. So the full circle, a, a circle with no colour in at all, is where very low adoption is currently taking place. And it progresses through to a, a fully filled in circle where the, the adoption is very high. So starting on the left hand side of the chart, we're talking about battery electric vehicles. Now, at the moment, um, the adoption is reasonably low at the moment in used cars. And the reasons for that is that although um, there is a zero pound company car tax and it's increasing new demand, there's no real incentive at the moment for used car buyers to buy a battery electric vehicle. Now, that could be a monetary incentive or per perhaps a disincentive for the internal combustion engines that we've got a lot of. But at the moment, there are no specific incentives for a buyer to go out and buy a bed. On the plug-in hybrid um, side of things, again, the lower company car tax is generating high sales for new cars, but there again, there is no incentive for used buyers to really look at that. And we see RVs have, having a little bit of risk here as we move forward because of that non-incentive. Non Perhaps true for BEVs, but really is very true for FEVs at the moment. Now, moving through full hybrid, reasonable adoption at the moment, there is a second life in the full, full hybrids because you, you don't have the, the, the necessary necessity to plug these vehicles in and they can be switched quite easily into taxis. And that's where we're seeing a lot of demand for full hybrids. So the self-charging hybrids. For hydrogen, there's very little adoption at the moment, and that's mainly down to the infrastructure. So the penetration still mean, remains very low in the UK with so few um, hydrogen filling stations. For both diesel and for petrol, used car penetration is high, demand remains high. Some of this is self-fulfilling because the, the cars that are three years old and coming to the market are predominantly petrol and diesel. And that maybe there's certainly a distortion in the supply at the moment because of COVID, but there's still a favor, they're still in favor of these vehicles and the demand remains strong. And because of that, RVs are remaining very strong as well. The next slide looks at how we can um, develop the RV outlook from 2021 to 2023. Like, just let me take you through this chart. Some of the, some of it's a little bit slow, small. So overall in the UK, we're looking at a reasonably high BEV RV outlook. So it's reasonably strong. But this year, um, overall, 39% is the overall average RV that we have um, in the UK. And although we'll see some uh, de decline a little bit in the UK, down minus. 0.9, the, the figures are repeated um, sort of on the right hand side, 0.9 down in 2021 and, and 2022 and 2023 see some recovery. But overall, the, the little graph um, in red that we can see, overall, there's a really good message here for, for, for BEVs moving forward. The, the trend shows a growing strength in the UK. And it's very similar to that in Spain, which is very positive because Sp Span Spain generally have very high RVs across all of their um, engines types. Now, this is being driven by increased customer knowledge. People are talking more about BEVs, but they're still relatively weak compared to the ICEs. And that's mainly down to no real incentive for used car buyers. Now, as, as we in incentivize and look at how we can help RV performance, we're really looking at how we can turn the negative outlook for 2021 into more of a positive and how we can influence the market in the UK moving forward. Now, at the moment, overall, we've seen that FEV RVs are overall stronger, moving down the right-hand side of the chart. 
and it really are relatively strong against BEVs. And that's mainly because we've still, that's the real the confidence in having an internal combustion engine plus the electric part of it. So there's relatively strong performance there. Full hybrids are very, very strong. And like I said, it's mainly because that second, second life that these vehicles can have, whether it's taxi, whether it's a family car, but there's a real, real sort of look at those for being the, the least, the least different option versus a full moving to a full battery electric vehicle. And of course, overall, ICEs remain very strong. Diesel latest is around 47% and petrol latest is 48.2. And as those now include a, a little bit of a hybrid element to many diesel and petrol engines, there is some electrification moving forward. But as we can see, the road to zero in the UK has been brought forward to 2030 maybe up to 2035 with some hybrids, but we'll let yet, yet to see how that's really going to push forward for a real electrification in the UK. So thank you very much. I'd like to hand over now to Johan Tuss and he'll take you through what's happening in France today. Uh, so uh, let me give you deeper details about the situation in France. And first, in 2020, the new car market registrations for EVs and PHEVs increased significantly. As PHEVs are mainly sold to fleet customers, most of the PHEVs will arrive on the used car market in 24 to 36 months only, while the demand on the used car market is currently increasing explaining strong RVs, especially at 12 months. Looking at electric vehicles, the market share went over 6%, meaning plus 4% around versus 2019. When focusing on section and mix since July 2020, we observed a steady increase of tactical registrations, mainly demos with a peak in December, mainly for cafe norm reasons. On the used car market, the picture is clearly not the same. Also, the number of electric vehicles increased as well. The interest for EVs remains low. Indeed, the EV market share reached 0.5% on the used car market at end of 2020, compared to 6.7% on the new car market. New car market perspectives are so more and more disconnected from used car market expectations, explaining detrimental RV impacts. When looking at the chart number one, uh, which compares the evolution of the volume of EVs on the used car market and the publication days between 2019 and 2020, we observe a volume increase of EVs on the used car market. We had more than the double of ads in 2020 versus 2019. As mentioned previously, OEMs have pushed EVs on the new car market and there are also less export opportunities for French EVs than in the past. Despite an increase, EV volumes on the used car market remain nevertheless very low compared to petrol and diesel volumes. Additionally, EVs have much higher publication days than ICs, pointing out the low adoption of EVs on the used car market. On average, all ages at all ages and all segments, 48 days in 2020 for EVs, compared to 31 days for diesel and petrol cars. Now, when looking at the chart number two, we can especially highlight three points. The first one, the comparison of EV depreciation curves in 2020 compared to 2019, highlights the harmful impact on RVs of the bonus coupled with set channel mix and volume effect. Why is the bonus increased by 2000 euros in this period compared to the new one? The euro RV decreased by 2,000 euros at 12 and 18 months. The second point uh, is that it also stresses the impact of the battery technological improvements on RVs. At 36 months, older generation BEVs show weaker RVs. We notice a gap of around 2,000 euros in favor to latest battery technology, offering greater autonomy. For the third point, this chart points out the used car market price limit acceptance for an EV. For young EVs, the buyer is currently not ready to pay more for an EV than for a diesel car, resulting in lower percentage RVs because of higher lease prices. Let's look at the orange line close to the red arrow, 26,571 euros. 
which is the average used car market price limits acceptance for an EV at 12 months, has so to be compared in this respect with the 27,222 euros for a diesel car on the gray line. Then after 18 months, the EV depreciation is stronger than for, for ICs. In this way, at 36 months, an EV is almost similarly priced to a petrol car. Let's look at the 15,649 euros and the orange line, which is the average price, uh, which is the average price for an EV. This is 4,500 euros less than a diesel car, the gray line. Then compared with other European countries, we see the BEV RV performance being the lower in France because of a high bonus amount coupled with an expected oversupply. As a result, the RV performance in 2021 and 2022 would decrease before stabilizing in 2023. Regarding PHEVs, we expect a high and almost stable residual value performance in the next two years. Nevertheless, because of stricter CO2 rules expected in 2021 and 2022, potential higher discounts could arm PHEV RVs in the future. I thank you for your attention, and I now hand over to my Italian colleague, Marco Pasquetti. Thanks, Johan, and uh, good morning, everyone. In the next minutes, we'll see the main drivers uh, we think it's important to highlight in order to understand where we are now and what will happen in the future of this uh, road to electrification from the used car market perspective. Uh, when we talk about uh, used car market adoption, we think uh, uh, now it's uh, still too soon for uh, BEVs. There is a lot of interest in full electric, but uh, it's important to highlight that the presence of a recharging point is growing with a growth of uh, in, in 2020 by 39% uh, year on year. But it's not uh, the same all over the country with a much better coverage uh, in the north of Italy than in the center or uh, the south. Moreover, there are uh, strong incentives uh, up to 10,000 euro that uh, we think will create pressure on the residual values. And uh, in many respects, uh, we share similar concerns with PHEVs. Talking about full hybrid, sales uh, increased uh, significant, significantly in uh, new market. And uh, even if it's still uh, negligible, the market share is increasing in uh, used car market as well. There are incentives for uh, full hybrid vehicles, but uh, they are much lower. Petrol is uh, the better developed uh, fuel type. The demand in the used car market is still very strong and it benefits from the diesel ban planned in big cities because of restrictions are lower and it's still the most affordable and reliable solution for people not ready for the electrification yet. Just a few words about hydrogen because we can say that there is no market. There is just one recharging station and two registrations uh, in uh, 2020. Fun fact, uh, one of them was a gift uh, for the Pope. Looking uh, at the outlook in the next slide, we can see that the residual values of full electric vehicles in Italy are amongst the highest across the Europe, with an average of 41.2% uh, for vehicles of uh, 36 months and 60,000 kilometers. The main reasons are that uh, the demand is increasing in a market, I mean the used car market, with a very low supply of vehicle older than 12 months. Uh, at the end of uh, 2019, there were just 22,000 full electric vehicles circulating in a country with more than uh, 39 million active cars. In the near future, we think that uh, BEVs will lose 2.5% uh, of value during the 2021, with a slow recovery starting from uh, 2022. The main uh, reasons are the effect of government incentives for buying a new car, as we said before, up to 10,000 euro, that will put uh, pressure on the values of the used cars. Moreover, we have to keep in mind that we are still in the middle of a pandemic with a dramatic impact on the economy. We think that this will depress the purchases. 
about uh, plug-in hybrids. Our outlook uh, is that uh, the decreasing trend will be milder compared to the full electric in 2021, with a minus two po points of percentage, but will have a similar behavior in the next few years. The decrease uh, will impact uh, B and C SUVs, where list prices are growing faster than uh, the residual values. Full hybrids will suffer the effect of the crisis, but will uh, remain strong, especially for vehicles older than uh, 36 months. And finally, talking about ICE, diesel is still very strong in terms of uh, residual values, but we expect that this will be the fuel that will suffer the most during the 2021, with a drop by 4% driven by an expected oversupply. Petrol will suffer the effect of the, of the crisis with a decreasing trend in the market average. So that's all by my side. I hand over the presentation to Anna Zofra, Valuations and uh, Insight Manager of Eurotax Spain. Over to you, Anna. Okay. Thank you, Marco, and good morning. Oh, good afternoon, everyone. Okay, the Spanish automotive sector is facing 2021 with concern, although we expect that the fall will not be as strong as the one we have experienced in January. Negative 51% for the new car market and negative 28% for the used car market. In any case, three used cars are currently sold in Spain for every new car. Therefore, it seems very relevant to analyze the perspectives of the used car market. Starting with the IC vehicles, and as we can see in the graph, we see a balanced evolution for diesel and petrol use cars. And regarding alternative powertrains, with seven units registered in 2020, we see no opportunity in the used car market for hydrogen power vehicles, at least not yet. Both electric and plug-in hybrids, focus of this webinar, have a long way to go in terms of volume with 4,500 cars transacted and 0.20% market share, there is only opportunity for growth and improvement. Finally, the big winners in this scenario are the full hybrids, as they are more reasonably priced and have not all, but some, advantages in accessing, crossing and parking in low emission zones. Now, moving to the residual value performance of the electric vehicles, and as you can see in the graph uh, at the left, despite this situation of an immature market, the residual values of EVs in Spain, the yellow line, are together with Italy, the green line, the highest in Euro 5. In three years, the residual values have grown by 10 points. As an example, in 2017, the average residual value of an EV was 12 points below that of Germany, which is the, the black line, and today is eight points higher. This apparently positive situation is very artificial and can be explained by the imbalance between supply and demand. There are very few used electric vehicles and only a small amount of demand. However, and despite this evolution of the last uh, few years, we expect the residual values of electric vehicles will readjust downwards starting this year. In fact, they are the ones with the most negative outlook, 4% loss over the next two years, and a slightly lower for FEDs, minus 3%. Several factors will influence this worst evolution, which nevertheless will bring the residual values of EVs to a more reasonable position among the rest of the powertrains. Above all, the very high prices, also mentioned by Christoph before. Affordability is the main barrier for consumers, even more in Spain. EV market uptake is directly correlated to GDP per capita. This explains why 80% of electric sales are concentrated in the six markets with the highest per capita income. Spain is not one of them, and our GDP has fallen by 12% in 2020. And this is just the beginning, as considering this, it doesn't seem reasonable that the price of an EV can be up to 15% more expensive on average in Spain than in Germany, while the opposite is true for the rest of the engines. The effort of an EV buyer in Spain shouldn't be higher than that of a buyer in Germany. 
a better pricing strategy would also avoid the need for an incentive scheme, which is more detrimental to residual values in the long run. The current incentive scheme program in Spain is lower than in other countries. However, it puts a slight pressure on RVs in a very limited market. Also, the pressure on sales led to an increase in the number of tactical registration in Q4 2020, cars that will return to the used car market in the course of 2021. Last and definitely not least, infrastructure development should be stimulated at a faster rate than demand. And this is not happening now. With just over 8,000 public charging points, Spain is at the bottom of the Euro 5 and one of the lowest, lowest in Europe. Considering that 70% of cars in Spain spend the night on the street, the private charging network is not uh, an alternative for integrating these vehicles into the market. It's uh, therefore essential that the governments remove the existing regulatory, economic and market barriers to the deployment of recharging infrastructures. Finally, in general, we see the EV market should be resized. Targets should be undertaken in a way that is compatible with the absorption capacity of the market. A more realistic strategy is needed. And that's all for Spain. I would like to hand you over uh, to my colleague Andreas Geilenbrugge, Head of Valuation uh, um, and Insights of Schwake. Thanks, Anna. So if we if we say Germany V market is uh, going off the rails, it's mainly because we find ourselves in a very ambivalent situation in new compared to the used car market. Um, on the one hand, new registrations of electric vehicles, so BEVs and FEVs included, have increased massively driven by the pandemic related and enforced premiums in 2020 pretending somehow demand. On the other hand, used car demand is not developing accordingly. And due to the large quantities of tactical and fleet registrations of 2020, um, is now creating high volume uh, pressure this year for very young used vehicles and in subsequent years for two, three and four year um, old ones. So at the same time, and just to illustrate the dilemma of the already increased volume of dealer, manufacturer and central registra uh, rental uh, registrations of uh, BEVs in 2019, still just one third had been sold as a used car, while um, ICEs have been absorbed at nearly 90% and above by the beginning of 2021. So the surplus of um, um, the surplus on, on uh, EVs being now accompanied by the 2020 uh, volumes and collecting um, continuously high stock days. So the situation is not much better for uh, plug-in hybrids, um, whose registration figures in 2020 have showed up significantly more than uh, battery electric vehicles. Um, overall, there is a lack of sustainable promotion of the used EV market. So the used buyers do not even benefit from the reduced company car tax as they are predominantly private buyers. Considering full hybrids, which are not incentivized in Germany, um, they're currently coming as a used vehicle from mostly few Asian brands like Toyota and Lexus. They have grown at a tolerable uh, rate and are quite well absorbed by the market. And finally, in the case of internal combustion engines, um, the diesel gate echo is uh, still being felt. While diesels have stabilized at a, a low, even slightly advantageous level, on both supply and demand side, the customer shift away from diesels in recent years has produced large volumes um, and oversupply of petrol cars via fleet registrations, which are now meeting a quite saturated market, causing a downward trend. Looking ahead to the upcoming years, so into the outlook, um, we are correspondingly skeptical and concerned about the performance of used EVs. The doubled government premium in 2020, while still in place, has a limiting and negative influence um, on this in several respects, as you can see on the shown valuation graph when the incentive came in place. Um, in addition to the volume pressure mentioned, this uh, several thousand euro subsidy lowers in fact the new car transaction price, especially in the smaller segments, and thus exerts cascading price pressure um, down from the used cars and older ones uh, to the older ones as a consequence. 
Furthermore, there is now um, also increasing competitive pressure within segments, which was not there before, due to numerous new models entering the market. At the same time, we have the biggest electricity prices in Germany compared to the rest of Europe, which limits demand in addition to the still existing range or charging, recharging anxiety and lack of incentives to buy. So we therefore expect the negative trend to continue, which will only balance out in later years after 2023. Um, Plug-in hybrids will fare similar, uh, similarly, albeit with disproportionately um, larger volumes and further risks, such as the increasingly critical assessment of env environmental sustainability, or as Christoph said, the, uh, the FEF gate. Um, full hybrids will also face growing competition from other brands now, but uh, demand is growing healthily, at least as it looks, uh, looks currently, and used car prices are not burdened by a new car premium. So the outlook um, for internal combustion um, engines is a bit more optimistic, risks seem to be manageable now, and demand will remain reasonably stable this year and the next. In summary, starting in 2020, last year, a clear imbalance between supply um, and demand has developed uh, that is currently not being counteracted by real used car support and thus represents a, a mortgage uh, for the coming years. And with that slightly pessimistic view, we continue with a brief look into Happy Norway, handing over to Christoph again. Yes, thank you, Andreas, and uh, we would have loved to present a uh, gear to you all um, who um, has done a fantastic job in preparing uh, for this webinar, but unfortunately he cannot join us uh, today. So I'm taking over. Having said that, if there are questions um, that you have specifically also to Norway, please send them over using the chat function and we will come back to you directly. So on, I mean, all eyes on Norway because um, Norway was one of the markets that had been absorbing a lot of uh, EV used car volumes um, over the past years and new car volumes as well. Um, but already it has, um, fortunately, there have been other markets uh, coming um, on board um, and taking some of the volume. Now for Norway, um, everything um, is, is, is kind of like um, uh, fast forward to, to Europe and what we should be expecting. So it's a, it's a great blueprint to look into. In 2020, and you see the little cursor on the graph in 2020, there were um, roughly 50% um, electric vehicles and 80% of those with battery electric vehicles registered as new cars. So roughly 70,000 battery electric vehicles um, in that market, 50% if you include the, the plug-in hybrids um, as well. Um, and this is going to, to rise um, quite strongly and, and, and up to 80% um, if you move to 2026. 20, so there seems to be a great continued demand um, coming from Norway. And if we move to the next slide, the, the big reason here for this is that it is a political, it has been a political decision um, for Norway to, um, you know, to move away from, you know, fossil fuel dependency. The country is quite rich, they can afford it. Um, and that was one of the reasons why adoption rate has been so high. There are a lot of subsidies, tax benefits of driving electric vehicle, and, and that is really the driver. Um, and we should be seeing um, some of this uh, behavior and development also in, in Europe. So there are no signs uh, for the demand uh, in Norway to change, which is good news um, for those countries that are currently producing a lot of used electric vehicles. And um, there was also a discussion a bit about what experience have people made with the technology. And for example, in, in Norway, it's not, it's not an ideal market from a temperature perspective. We know that um, cold temperatures, they do lower the range of the vehicle and the capacity of the battery, but they do not um, harm the battery, right? So once temperatures are rising again and the battery, battery recovers again, it hasn't been an issue in, in Norway. Um, also, demand is strong on used car markets. There's one caveat here, and that is related to infrastructure. As, as long as you're not living in a, in a city, um, you, um, you, you, you have you know, your own personal charging available. You are in a, in a good shape. But charging costs are increasing. 
and city centers as well. So that's um, a potential you know, limit, a potential um, you know, question mark for, for Norway and that they need to deal with. Um, so increasing ranges is also something that they will be, will be looking for. And with that, I'd like to hand over to Phil with um, yeah, a summary. Thanks, Christoph. So, what can we take from, from what we've learned and, uh, and what can the industry do going forward? Well, first of all, the automotive industry needs to professionalise cross-border remarketing skills. Demand on used car markets for electric vehicles and internal combustion engines will vary strongly. And overstimulation in high subsidies markets needs to be absorbed. There also needs to be a focus on the post subsidies scenario. List prices for battery electric vehicles must come down as subsidies run out. And prices across Europe need to be harmonised for electric vehicles as they are at the moment for internal combustion engines. We also need to anticipate higher remarketing volumes as most EVs will be in leasing or PCP arrangements at present and return to the market after three to four years. So there will be a period where we will see a great flux coming into the used market. There also needs to be a partnership in the development of infrastructure and this will help RVs of older generation battery electric vehicles. Infrastructure is key to many for the buying demand so and the buying decisions. So therefore, more charging points will benefit the industry. And finally, we need to promote and integrate standardized battery state of health certification into used car labels so buyers know exactly what they're getting when they pick up their new used EV. Now, that brings us to the end of today's session. I'd like to thank all of our speakers today and remind you that we will look to answer any questions you have directly. If you think of anything you'd like to ask our team following this webinar, contact details are now on screen. And please do remember that this presentation will be made available to you all as well. So you don't have to worry if you miss the emails on screen now. Finally, I just want to quickly mention Autovista Group's residual value intelligence, which gives you detailed information that can help you to steer your business through these challenging times. This tool allows users to review trends and gives real context to analysis by interrogating dashboards on the five big markets, 14 vehicle segments, seven fuel types and 38 brands. To find out more and request a, a free seven day trial, please contact Tim Budgin, whose details are also on the screen. For now, thank you very much for joining us and I look forward to welcoming you on our other webinars throughout the year. Thank you.